Hey everybody, I'm Rob Childs, Rapier Swordsman out of the United States, bringing you the latest installment in a series of uh, instructional videos on this beautiful art form known as Rapier. So, just wanted to follow up with the last video where I talked about the adaptive dagger defense, uh, whereby your dagger adapts itself according to what your opponent's sword is showing you. Well, in this particular instance, I'm going to talk about the adaptive dagger offense, whereby my dagger's placement is based upon my sword. So when I talk to my students about this, I remind them that every time that they extend their sword to their opponent, they're closing an avenue of attack back at them, the very same avenue that they've extended their sword on. But every time you close one door, you open another. So just by way of illustration, if I extend my sword on a high line, for example, I am not going to have to worry about my opponent attacking me back on this line. If he tried, our swords are going to interfere with each other, and it wouldn't quite be a parry, but nonetheless, it'll be an ugly, uh, disengage uh, an ugly engagement that's going to cause neither of us to get anything done. But when I extend my sword on this line, though I close this door, I open another door, in this case, the low line back at me. So I need to make sure that I'm closing that. So if my opponent, for example, extends their sword, and I gather it up, and I'm shooting back out on the repost. Now I've got their sword on the outside, right? But what happens if that sword comes off of there and comes back at me? Well, if I don't have that door closed, then I'm inviting my opponent to strike me in return. So that being the case, I adopt an adaptive dagger offense. So when I throw my sword out at my opponent, I close the door that I open. So I extend out on this high line, and in this particular instance, I will lay my dagger right there. What I've done now is closed this as an option for them. So what I'm going to do right now is utilize Lynn from behind the camera to hold her sword up at me so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So she's got her sword out here. I've got my parry here. As soon as I start to extend on my riposte, I close the avenue of attack back at me just in case her sword comes off of there and comes back at me. Now I'm safe and I can continue my attack. Whether I hit or miss doesn't matter as long as you're doing so having secured your own safety. So that is when you are extending against a high line. Just by way of further example, if I was to parry my opponent into a low line, I will use my dagger in an adaptive fashion. Again, where my dagger goes is based upon what my sword does. So in this instance, let's say for example, I parry my opponent low line. I go into what I call my parry seven. So my opponent extends their sword out towards me, I parry the weapon, but I also cover down, right? In this case, I'm covering the open door on the high line, just in case that sword comes off and comes after me, because that can happen at any time over the course of your riposte. So you want to ensure your own safety by closing the door you left open. Now, there's a simple little drill that I will do with myself, whereby I practice how the hand moves and you can do this anywhere. You can be in your office space, what have you. So as a reminder, if you extend your sword on the high line, you want the dagger to cover the low line. So immediately I do this, I cover here. If I extend to the low line, my dagger must cover the high line. So I do this and I'm basically just touching at the wrists, right? So high line, low line, and same thing. If I have to cover to what I call my parry four, Here's my sword, here's my dagger. If I was gonna be parrying into my eight, here's my sword, here's my dagger. And what you can do is simply move yourself through the motions very quickly, you will find that you're able to do this without thought. And that is the ideal situation for any swordsman, being able to execute these moves without having to think about it just because your body knows what to do. There is still very much another aspect in using the dagger that I wanted to make sure I covered down with you on. And that is when that right-handed fighter versus a right-handed fighter, or in this case too, you could have a lefty versus a lefty. Now, in that instance, my opponent's sword is going to be on the same side as my dagger. As if you were that opponent and you're right-handed, your sword is going to be on the same side as my dagger. So when I make my attack against that person, it is not necessarily going to be an instance of needing to do the adaptive dagger offense the way I just showed you where the dagger is taking a position based upon where my sword goes. However, that dagger still needs to cover that line that your opponent could potentially have back to you. What I do when I'm facing that situation 
is I will make my attack, and let's say, for example, my opponent is a typical high guard fighter. So Lynn, if you want to go ahead and show them that. So what I have is a right-handed person, as if from your perspective, and how I would attack that. Now, in here, I'm going to be showing again, where as soon as I attack, I'm covering that line. I'm not touching their sword, which is very important. You don't touch the sword, let them come to you and strike your dagger. If you do the reverse, if I was actually to make my attack and I touch, from the moment that we make contact, her body, her mind, unconsciously, well, subconsciously, she's gonna know that she's already been blocked and she's gonna immediately start to go to a different avenue. So I want to not touch that weapon. I just want to put it in the way. So she will waste a beat of time coming out to me. Now, when I do that, if I make my attack and I don't feel contact with my dagger right away, it can only mean one of two things. Either she did nothing at all, or she's changing lines. So as a reflexive action, you as the attacker, when you make that attack, if you don't instantaneously feel something here, immediately flick your wrist down. Conversely, if that person is fighting from a mid guard or a low guard, if I attack that person and my dagger's aligned low to lock out that line and I don't instantaneously feel something, I flick my wrist up because it can only mean one of two things. She did nothing at all, or she disengaged and now she's coming at me on the high line, in which case then, yeah, maybe I hit her, but I'm completely over. Okay, so as always, uh, if you guys have any questions, by all means, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. I'm also gonna be putting these videos out on the YouTube channel under my name. You can find it readily enough. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I will do my best to try and answer them. Or if you have any suggestions for videos you would like to see, maybe you've seen me do something and you would like me to expound upon that, please feel free, let me know. I'll be more than happy to accommodate best I can. Until then, uh, take care and fight on.